Pete, your totally obsessed tennis coach. Now, if you enjoyed today's video with this TennisCon All-Star, make sure you stick around to the end because I'm going to show you how can, you can get your hands on TennisCon 7, 100% free. So enjoy today's lesson and stick around to the end of the video. Okay, here we go. Showtime. Uh, what I'd like to do, I just need a little better blueprint or roadmap exactly how you're hitting your forehand. You know, once I see what's going on, then we're gonna get a game plan, get under the hood, I'm gonna get you the ATP forehand. Awesome. Here we go. Okay, not bad, not bad. There's some potential here, I got something to work with. You're in the neighborhood. Okay, definitely in the neighborhood. Okay, couple more. I like it, I like it. A few more, it's all about the repetitions. Good, I like it, I like it. All right, time out. Okay, let me explain a little bit about what's going on. First off, there's a lot to work with here. Obviously, good athlete, you've been around the block, you've played, the racket starting off is on the hitting side. So right off the bat, you know, I'm not working from something from outer space where someone has a giant loop and the racket goes to Canada, to California, up to Mexico and back to Georgia. So the backswing is manageable. It is on, it is on the hitting side. So I can see that you've studied this. You've gotten bits and pieces of kind of maybe stuff you saw that I've done or other people. Um, so you do have the concept down. Okay, great. I'm telling you all the good things first before I go, before I go for the jugular. Right, you okay. you're hopeless. Go for the jugular, Nick. That's what I'm here for. Okay, so no, you're on the hitting side of the body, which I like. The first thing I would address is not even a technical issue. There's five things I see right off the bat you gotta do. Okay. Relax. Yeah, I'm tired, I'm nervous. Relax, relax, relax. I don't know if I can do that. if you can get number five, relax. Oh. Okay, and this is, this is, pretty much, Peter, this is the wild card with mm -hmm. a lot of adults. Yeah. And trust me, we're gonna get deep into the forehand and I'm gonna go over every aspect of how this thing should work. But at the end of the day, if I can put the, the, the technique on a relaxed thoroughbred, that's a lot different than even a donkey. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So okay. really at the end of the day, the relaxation plays such a big component with sure. adults because adults hold the racket too tight. I'm holding it too tight. They're, 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 they're way, they, they just, there's way too much tension in your game. Yeah. You know, and for me to give you an AK-47 yeah. instead of a little pea shooter, okay, <laughs> you can have great technique, right, right. but what if the person's tight? Yeah. And we all know in sports, yeah. football, baseball, basketball, tennis, when, you can have a great technique, but if you're tight, it's gonna diminish the racket speed, it's gonna diminish the ball velocity, the spin yeah. rate and everything. Yeah. So the, the biggest thing I can tell you to do is try not to try, because it's been my experience for adults is they try too hard. You know, yeah. you want someone to try hard, you want that competitive spirit, and you want someone to work hard. Mm -hmm. But sometimes when there's so much tension, it ruins everything. Yeah. And this is the art of the deal. To become the best you can be, you gotta be very intense and try hard, which yeah. I see that's in your wheelhouse, yeah. but you gotta be calm. Yeah. And when those two forces meet, then you optimize your ability. You play at the highest level. And that's what these guys at the top and ladies do. Very high arousal, very intense, but they're calm. Ah. You can't have one without the other. Yeah. It's like a point guard who's yeah. very quick and fast and intense, and he just runs into the guy and he has four fouls the first quarter. Mm -hmm. He needs to be able to slow down and manage himself. Okay. So before I even get into the technical part, you Just gotta relax. relax. I would hold the racket a lot looser in your yeah. hand. Yeah. That would be the first thing that jumps yeah. out at me. That's like my security blanket. I'm feeling, I know like if I hold it tight, I'll make the shot. But do you, do yeah. you feel that you're holding it tight? I was tight? holding it tight because I'm nervous. Okay. And I'm with a leg. But it, <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Listen, it's okay to be nervous because that means you want something yeah. and you care. And I don't care if it's Tom Brady, Michael Jordan, LeBron, everybody gets nervous before the big event. Yeah. So nerves are good. That means you care. Yeah. But I've already brought up about the tension and the relaxation without asking you, and just because of all my experience, yeah. I could see yeah. how you're holding the racket so tight, mm. you're not getting anything for free, yeah. and trust me, free is good. Free you know, is good. free is good. So if you can get it for free. So the first thing I'd want you to do is not hold the racket so tight. Right. To me, then I'm putting the stroke 
on something that's going to happen a little easier. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, I'll try now, to that's a, that's a yeah. huge thing. So let me do this. Before I get into the technique, try go, yeah, go back there. Try not to try. You can sing a song to yourself. <laughs> okay, I actually have kids say, I don't care. Or okay. I talk to them about their weekend and they hit better. Okay. Now, there's other people, they need to be more intense because yeah. they're kind of in a coma and I got to get them plugged in. <laughs> okay. That's a different discussion. Yeah. That's yeah. a different lesson. Yeah. So hop back here. Okay. I don't want any grip pressure and let's see what happens. Okay. Barely hold on to the racket. Just barely hold on. Just barely hold on. Okay. Good job. Good job. Good. Already a different sound. Hello. Hello. Already a different sound. Did you drive here or fly down? I drove. Okay, good, stay relaxed. Now hit this one and smile. All right, come on back. Now, did the last one feel different? Yeah, they felt, they felt better. They felt a lot All right, better. lesson's over, I've already solved the problem. Okay, <laughs> no, you just gotta chill out. And yeah. that's the hardest thing to do. Yeah. Even some of the kids that I have, I have to have them give them a smile. This happens more at the net, mm -hmm. especially with younger girls, because they don't want to get hit and they don't like the net. You know, I gotta pay them to go to the net, I gotta bribe them but I find it more at the net. I have people smile. So you gotta flip it in your mind. Uh -huh. Cause it, there's an old saying, it is what it is, but let me tell you something. A lot of times it is what it isn't. Yeah. You gotta relax. Cause I could tell there was a little different sound. Yeah. You had a little bit more racket head speed and the spin rate was different. Did you feel anything different? I felt like it was popping off my racket more. I did feel a little more like, oh, I don't know if they're gonna go in or out. So I- Okay, I let me like jump was, in. Yeah. Let me jump in. Cause we're gonna cover a lot of, when you play, your job description really should be run, sweat, and shut up. And not in that order, especially for okay. some, some people out there. Side, yeah, 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 maybe not in that order. So see, you're already analyzing because yeah. you teach and coach, yes. and we all want to analyze. Mm -hmm. You can't analyze. Okay. See, you just said something to me that was profound. You said, I wanted to see if they were going to go in, or I didn't know if they were going to, you already down the yellow brick road yeah. trying to figure out the result. Yes and you gotta try not to try. try, not to try. That's the best saying of all time. Mm -hmm. Give me a few more and then we're gonna get into the technique. Okay. All right, you're still on probation, you gotta relax. Smile, sing a song, have fun, I don't care. That's why people play against better people when the, yeah, that felt great. That's why people play against better people, they have nothing to lose, they're not analytical, they're just having fun in the sun. I like what I'm seeing, let it go. All right. One back. Those were better, and I hadn't even gotten started. I hadn't gotten started yet, and it's already better. Good. See, you're getting in touch with your inner. See, and you got to be in touch with your inner and try not to try. See, I was talking to you there, mm -hmm. and sometimes, believe it or not, the best coaching, don't say anything. Yeah. Because a lot of time coaches want to just tell you how smart they are, and they keep yapping, and it makes you tight as a drum. So we were actually doing something different there, and you were so relaxed, but you did one thing. You actually told me, oh, that one felt better. See, yeah. I already knew it felt better. Mm -hmm. I appreciate your endorsement that it felt better, but I knew it felt better. See, the sound doesn't lie. And when I see the spin that you get, you're getting stuff for free. And this is really impo important. This is why pressure, it, it kills people. It's yeah. a difference between great and good. Mm. There's so many talented people. There's so many people, but the wild card is, can you do things when the fans are in the stands, when mm. the lights are on, yeah. you know, when you're hitting that golf ball and no one's around, everybody can jack it. Then all of a sudden 20 people are watching, you hit it in the parking lot. Yeah, yeah. What is that all about? <laughs> okay, so it's called pressure. Yeah. So you got to flip it in your mind and that's what you kind of did there. So I wanted to get this relaxation okay. stuff out. And if you notice one comment I made, and this is, I never could understand this, and everybody, club players, kids, how's come everybody plays better when they play better people? Mm, yeah. And they play worse when they play worse people. It should be the other way around, in my thinking. You should play better than someone you're better than yeah. because they're worse. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you should play worse against someone better because they're better, but it's the exact opposite. Right, exactly. Because when you hit the ball in the net against the hamburger, it's a lot different than if you hit it in the net against Fetter. Yeah, sure. You're not gonna be, and so the nervous system responds and makes you tight. So I know this about the ATP forehand, I'm getting into some mental stuff, but one of the things that I do uh, for all the kids, it's like I said, I gotta put this forehand on a relaxed player, you know, a thoroughbred, I can't have someone tight as a drum. Yeah. So, and that's to optimize it. I just yeah. don't want you to look good. Yeah. I want a good stroke that, that's a weapon. Right. All right, yeah. so jump back in there. I'm okay. gonna get into the technical part. Okay. 
Go, kid a few more. Okay, couple more. Okay, now, before I get into the stroke, I want you to try one more thing. Okay. After you hit the ball, and I'm not saying there's a wrong way or a right way, there's a better way. Your back foot, and this is, a, this is what a lot of people don't understand. It's usually a cause and an effect. After you hit the ball, the back foot can come around or the hip can come around. It's a great teaching tool that I use, but because of this tension stuff that we talked about earlier, your back foot is coming around sometimes a little too soon. And from the scapula area or the shoulder blade area, I see this a lot with adults. And it's what we call your muscling ball. And I'll go back to the tension. Remember how I said you were too tight? I want you to hit 10 more balls. Keep your back foot back after you hit the ball. Okay. After you hit it, even if it feels natural to bring it around, I want it back and then we're gonna have a discussion. Hopefully you won't pull a hamstring or the lesson's gonna be over. Oh, here goes a hammy. Just drag your back foot like a golfer for now. That's all I want you to do. Some of the balls are a little wet. Had a little rain this morning, but the show goes on here. Oh, back foot, bring, bring it back. Yeah, you just gotta keep it back, keep it back. Just keep it back, keep it back. Okay, two more, just keep it back. Okay, one more, keep it back. Okay, conference. Come in here, Peter, conference. Okay, you can say whatever you want to say about that exercise. What I'm doing here, I haven't gotten to the technique yet. I'm, I've already thrown out some corrective techniques for you or for other coaches or people to be in touch with because they read something, they hear something, you know, and a lot of times it's more surface stuff, it's, it's vanilla, and the things that I try to do is I can connect the dots and correct things and kind of expedite the learning curve, but just Tell me what you felt other than different when I said keep the foot back and you hit a few. I felt longer, I felt extension, and, and I also felt more relaxed and I felt more power coming from, from here. Did I do good, did I we, do good coach? You did great, we hadn't even started yet. <laughs> we hadn't even started with this stroke yet, but already off the bat, see before I jump into the ring, I, 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 it's like an assembly line. Whether I start at the person's feet or their head, I react accordingly to what I call the big ticket items. And these things have jumped out at me. I see Peter is pretty tight compared to you know what level he should be at, in my opinion, with the relaxation. And as a corrective technique, I'm not, as a matter of fact, yesterday I had some kid bring that right foot around just so he would pull, the body would pull the racket instead of him arm it. But Peter's doing it because of tension. Your mm -hmm. scapula and shoulder blade were in there so early, the kinetic chain instead of leg, hip, shoulder, arm was kind of leg, hip, and then you threw the kitchen sink in there. Okay. So, but what's funny, I don't want you to do things because I say it. I don't want you, I want people to disagree because then I keep talking and probing till they all agree. <laughs> That's the way I work this thing. I'm going to see Rick's uh, Eventually, I'll, I'll, it, it's all going to work out. But you immediately, when I, we talked about the relaxation, you bought in yeah. about the grip pressure and all this other stuff. And now I told you to put your foot back. I couldn't put this in an article because I have to explain it in the contents for that individual that day in that situation. I can't throw a net out there. They say, oh, that Rick guy's crazy. What's yeah. he talking about? So I reverse engineer a lot of this stuff and it's a corrective technique. And I let the student, because I talk to every student, what do you think? What do you feel? What's cooking? I let them tell me, so now I have accountability. So if there is a rebuttal, because a lot of people don't like to change, people like don't like to experiment, I have a reference point, almost like I've given them a deposition and I boxed them in, okay? But you came immediately and said, I felt more extension. I didn't say extend more. Yeah. You said you felt like, would you say more power? What else did you say? I, I, felt more, I felt more length power and I felt more coming from here. I felt that length, I felt the drive See, in there. what he's doing, because he coaches, he is telling you from a teaching point of view what he got for free. See, and I corrected three or four things there without even having to bring it up because by him keeping the foot back, the kinetic chain stayed intact. Now, as time went on, once he does this, the energy the foot could come, yeah. but I saw it coming prematurely, not always, and I've never seen you play. That's why your best shots are when you're on the run, reached out, and the ball is low. Yeah. 
That's my shots. Yeah, I, I, I do like to hit on the run and, and low, yeah. See what I mean? Because yeah. he gets it for free. Yeah. So where when it's easy, sometimes you cough it up because you muscle the ball and you bring the back foot in too soon, okay, and you shoulder the ball. Yeah. Okay, and there's nothing like setting the table and not being able to eat. Right. When you set the table, you gotta eat. Right. Okay, we're not we're gonna get to the technical part of the modern forehand, which I don't know what that means anymore. Um the next you know, I kinda yeah, I kinda coined it the next generation forehand, the ATP, because it is a little bit different. What I'm gonna do now, okay, with Peter Stroke, he is on the hitting side, so that's a game changer. What I'm gonna do now is all technical from here on in. Let's go. Okay, cool. Here we go. I love this stuff. It's like, it's like McDonald's. I'm loving it. Let's go. Okay, I'm not saying it's wrong. Here's what I want you to do. Keep your non-dominant hand, your right hand, Keep your right hand on the racket till the ball bounces. This is another corrective technique. I'm not saying wrong way, right way. By the way, Federer does it, Nadal, Djokovic, they're pretty good. They have a lot of potential. I think they'll be good someday. But I want you to do it not because they do it. I'm saying, by the way, they do it also. I'm doing it as a corrective technique and you'll feel the difference. So you keep that hand on the racket. You do your unit turn all the way back and then don't let go till it bounces. Turn a little bit more, Pete. Now, turn the shoulders a little bit more so that, yeah, the, I want your front shoulder. This is the first biomechanical correction. I want your front shoulder at the ball and your hip at the ball. So whether you hit semi or open stance, closed stance, whatever stance you have, it doesn't matter. And by the way, let me get this out of the way. Whether you hold continental, Eastern, semi-Western, Western, Siberian, North Korea, whatever grips there are these days, I don't know. The grip doesn't matter. The grip does not matter. All the grip does, all the grip does is orientate the racket face. Everybody needs to understand that. You might get more spin or less spin. You might hit it flatter or cleaner. That's what the grip can do. But there's nothing in this stroke. You can hit it with any grip you want but there are advantages and disadvantages. Remember, all the grip does is orientate the racket. Because I get thousands of email throughout the year about can you hit the, grip, uh, the forehand with this grip? Or does the grip do this or that? Or can I pat the dog, which I'll get into in a minute. Can I do all this stuff with a certain grip? The grip doesn't matter, but you can get more for free with certain grips. All I want Peter to do now, the first corrective technique, keep his non-dominant hand on the racket till the ball bounces. Good, and keep the foot back, good. Now, you're gonna keep the non-dominant hand on the racket, let the ball bounce, let the ball go by you and don't hit it. Do not hit it. Look at it, he looked at me and said, what the, you fill in the blank, okay? Don't hit it. Here we go, you ready? Okay, come here, conference. We're gonna have a lot of conferences, I love challenges. Okay, let me ask you a question. When I told you to let it go by, and not hit it. Not only did you like freak out on me, you looked at me like, what are we doing here? But then when you actually let it go by, what did you feel inside and how hard was that? It was so hard, it was weird. I don't know. Yeah, see, I this just, is what I do. Uh -huh. Okay, now this is like, you're getting stuff and you actually picked a great day because it rained in my next lesson so we can go a lot longer. This is stuff I do for people that are a little anxious, there's a lot of anxiety. And what you said, I've heard thousands of times. I'm pitching the ball underhand, the sun's shining, it's 80 degrees, we're having a great time. I'm pitching it underhand and I say, hey bro, let the ball go by you and you're going, Jesus, that's the hardest thing I've ever did. So that <laughs> yeah. shows you. Yeah. So if I did that to Federer, yeah. he'd probably go, that's the dumbest thing anybody ever asked me to do. Uh -huh. You know, because that shows you you're not calm, mm -hmm. okay? And so what we're gonna do now, before I get any further, keep your hand on, keep the foot back, and I'm gonna yell out something. Go ahead. Here we go. You're rolling. I'm getting to where I wanna to get to. Okay? Let it bounce twice and then hit it. Good. Let it bounce twice. Good. Let it go by it. Don't hit it. Okay, let it bounce three times. That's two. 
Good it's it. Yeah, it's okay. It's, it should be the same in Florida, Georgia, Arkansas. I think it's the same, okay? Three. Good. Two. Last time, four. Conference, conference. Well, I told you, we're gonna have a lot of conferences today. Conferences are good. If, with, if it's with the right person, how hard was that? It's, it's, it's just, the timing is crazy, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So it shows you, and the reason why I've kind of navigated or I've kind of went in this direction, because you said this is more for adults and stuff yeah. like that. This is stuff that's right in their wheelhouse, uh, besides the stroke we're gonna talk about, that can really help their game. And it might seem like a waste of time, but this is the stuff I do with world-class players and have I for a long it. time. I, I, I get control of the nervous system because at the end of the day, if you can relax, and we've all had those moments or those shots or those matches that we wish we could bottle up. And what I try to do without you know, doing yoga or going to a shrink or something like that, I can do stuff on the court to calm them down. But what I do, it's, it's not just hocus pocus or voodoo stuff. I then ask the student, not like I'm doing with you and you yeah. give me the feedback, you thought it was amazing and you felt you could feel the difference. I do it with students over a long period of time and they say, Rick, you have no idea how much common. I let them tell me, but you know what? I can see the difference or I wouldn't keep preaching to the mm -hmm. choir mm -hmm. and injecting this into my teaching. Yeah. Give me a little more feedback so I'm gonna go technical right now. Okay. Okay, here we go. Hold on to it. One bounce, one bounce, two bounces. Keep a hold of the racket, keep a hold of it. Three bounces, hold, 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 hold. Good, stay right there. The best thing about your game that I like, you try hard, you're competitive, you're feisty, and you're intense. And those are the same attributes that maybe stopped you for going two levels further, you know what I mean? It's a lot of the, a lot of the tension. Because even when I tell you to hold onto the racket, it's hard to do that. And listen, at the end of the day, when people go there, they're gonna do what they want. But when they can experience what it's really like to relax, get more racket speed, see, you're going to get it by feeling it, not by reading it or hearing it, by feeling it. And I'm giving you a lot of things to do that will just blow people away. Two more. Two bounces. Good. Let it go by you. Let it go by you. Let it go by you. See, I raised my voice, and you were ready to jack that one. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Here we go. Ready? Let it go by you. How hard is that? Okay, he said it's getting easier. The moral of the story is you got to experiment. Everything's difficult. Before it gets easier, it shouldn't get harder. But who wants to waste their time doing stuff like this? But I'm going to tell you, it's a game changer. You know, I've been on a tennis court since I was 22 years old, and I still teach 50 hours a week. Okay, probably do more private lessons than anybody in the world. It, and I, I've studied this. The human anatomy, the biomechanical part, what we're going to get into. But how to correct things very much out of the box to help students of all ages and all levels. Now, one thing I like about Peter's forehand, he turns his shoulders, okay, and he keeps a racket on the hitting side. That's a big thing. Most people, when they do this stroke, they take the racket back. This is a hinge, this is a hinge, and that's a hinge, okay, the part of the arm. At, when we have a hinge, it's natural when something hinges, that's what's natural. It's natural to go this way. So that's why you see little kids, more on the female side, maybe because of the strength factor. When they turn sideways, people, when they take the racket back, because this hinges, the racket goes what we call to the inside. And already, Peter does this at more advanced, he turns sideways and the racket does go to the outside. This is called the outside. This is called the inside. I like to use the clock analogy, which I've done over the years, if there was a clock, and I'll do it backwards because he's a lefty, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. So six would be right here, okay? So when, he, when some people come out of the backswing, which I'm sure a lot of adults watching this, they take the racket this way. That would just be a classic old school forehand. I'm not saying it's wrong, very prominent on the WTA tour, but when there's pressure and it gets more complicated, much more difficult. When you have time, when we have time, we're all great. When the ball's slow, everybody can do everything. But when it comes fast, okay, you have to make an adaptation or a modification to your backswing, and all that is is shortening your backswing, which is a good tip. 
the ATP forehand. And the reason why I named it that is more prominent on the guy side, even though a lot of girls, Hennen back in the day did this, um, Kasnova does this, Stozer, a little bit of a hybrid, they're not exactly doing it right. And even a handful of pros I work with, uh, I'm tweaking their forehand and they're already amazing, the forehand. But I get into joint angles, elbow positioning, and corrective techniques, how to get the racket faster with more spin. Because at the end of the day, that's what tennis is about. How hard can you hit the ball and keep it in. That's what you see on television. That's what this is all about. Everybody's consistent if the ball's going one mile an hour. So that's what this is all about. And this stroke, you get a lot for free. And to me, this is the way tennis should be taught. If someone doesn't want to learn this stroke, no problem. There is another way, because at the club level and even at certain levels of uh, junior, college, and pro, the balls are manageable still. Especially if you have fast twitch muscle, great and eye coordination or superior foot speed. You can get away with it. But why if there's a better way that's been proven, backed up by science, to make the racket go faster and it's shorter, I'm signing up for that one. That's the one I want because, and that's the way every teacher in the world should be teaching, okay, their students. Okay, you can't say, oh, they're too little. They're not big enough. They're not strong enough. It's nonsense. I have five, six-year-olds that can do this. So it's a matter of understanding. The other way is easier. Just turn your shoulders, make a loop, an arc, a rainbow, a banana, <laughs> a candy cane, a Ferris wheel, you know, letter C. You can do all that. No, I'm not saying that's wrong. It takes longer. The game's different today. Everything's so much faster, quicker. Foot speed's a premium. But you know what? Preparation is a premium. Preparation's a premium, different than 10 years ago even. And stroke mechanics is at an all-time high. And this is what everybody's finding out, but way back in the early 90s, you know, uh, Roddick did this. So I've known the concept. Obviously, I know a lot more about this now because I've studied it inside out, look at 50,000 MRIs, work with a lot of biomechanists on this stuff, but more importantly, can explain it in a way for the viewers to teach you this. So uh, first thing I'd want Peter to do, I want this shoulder towards the net, whether he's hitting open stance or closed stance. He does a lot of open stance. So if he does open or semi, I want the shoulders to go farther than the hips. This is what we call a separation angle. When the upper body is farther than the lower, it creates what we call a twist or a torque. From a scientific point of view, it's called a separation angle. The upper body, okay, is farther than the lower body. So then when you go to hit the shot, at the end, the shoulders are going faster. You get it for free. It's like a golf swing. You go past where you should, your hips are, and it makes it go faster. So right off the bat, when he took it back, the shoulder wasn't turned far enough, okay? So that's another little thing that is gonna help him get more power. So unless you're really, really wide, the shoulders will always go further than the hips, always. And that's one of the most common mistakes in junior tennis and on the WTA Tour where you see a lot of these guys, when they prepare, you're gonna see the shoulder almost under the chin. And to me, it's the number one stake mistake around the world. Even if you do a WTA stroke and have a bubble loop, arc, rainbow, banana, candy cane, Ferris wheel, letter C, even if you do that stuff, people don't turn their shoulder enough. Where a lot of guys, okay, and a few handful of gals, and what should be done to optimize. When I say optimize, I mean to max out, lights out, to hit every, every button, all the way to there. But people don't like to do it because they got little arms, little legs, they don't, they wanna see the ball. This feels better, I can see the ball. Yeah. This is a little scary, you know, and then you gotta be careful because when I tell them to do this and this, I solve a problem, but I create a different problem. Now they're looking the other way and the elbow's way back here. The art of the deal is this, and this is what I'm gonna have Peter do. I want his shoulders to go farther than the hips, his elbow was amazing, by the way. His elbow is on the hitting side, so he checked that box, okay? So now, here's the key. When you come out of the backswing, the elbow extends to the outside. And if there's a clock, since it's, he's a lefty, it would be time like 6.30, 7 o'clock, 7.30. So you wanna go to the outside, if I can have your weapon. You want the racket, once you're here, this elbow doesn't move. I like the elbow. I like to tell people there's a light on your elbow. Have the light shine at the ball, the light at the ball. 
Now, I know Rafa, he goes a little behind the, the rib cage. You don't want to see the elbow on the other side. That's too far. I like to teach people away from the body. Keep it on this side. Because most people, you, you got to shorten their strokes. And this is a big, big problem. And that's why people say, oh, we'll do it later. Here's what they I already, I'm already telling you what people are telling you. Shorten your stroke. Your elbow's too close. Hit it more out in front. You know, this is a correction you're going to hit. You're going to get down the road if you're not already, especially some of these kids. I'm already telling you what you're going to, but when I have people do this stroke, that might happen, what I just said, because of their footwork or because they choke, not because of the mechanics. That's a whole different animal. They're not late. So they come here, the racket's going to go to the outside, and I teach this in progressions. Sometimes I go A, B, and then I have them fire the legs and hips because that's the turbo engine. The power starts from the ground. It doesn't start from the arm. Kids buy a racket, parents buy a racket, they grab the racket, they think they hit it with the arm. This, let me tell you, this is the car, this is the passenger. The car, okay, pulls. The leg drives up, which he does great. The hip turns, which he does great. His trunk turns, because he's played at a high level. And he is pulling the racket forward, all right? Some people go A, B, and then they pre-roll the racket, so they're back to their old stroke. Or, if I don't do it in progression, they'll go like this, and then they go to the inside. I teach this in progressions. A, unit turn. Left shoulder ball. Left hip at the target. 90 degree angle, but with Peter, I would let him invert the racket. Roddick did this. Tommy Ho did this. Sock does it. Kyrgios does it. This is a variation of the stroke. I have many kids here, especially the boys. They invert the racket. When you invert it, what I mean, when the racket's a little bit tilted, okay, okay, then when you go to tap the dog, okay, you will get a little more relaxation and create more of an oval. But with people just starting out, I like them to be clean. A, B, looking through the mirror. Now, if I have an Eastern grip, it'd be a little more like that. No one plays with Continental, maybe a few older people do. There, if you have a Western, it's gonna be a little more closed. But at the end of the day, you wanna tap the dog. This is a phrase that I coined a while back, okay? There's a dog, okay? A little dog like a poodle, not a German Shepherd or not a giraffe. You don't want to go like that. So you're going to tap the dog, okay, at this position. Don't pet the dog. A lot of people have rephrased a lot of the stuff I put out there, and they said pet the dog. You don't pet the dog. If you pet the dog, the wrist is there. Biomechanically, when the racket head is above the wrist, whether you're hitting a golf ball, baseball, tennis ball, two in a backhand, it goes faster. That's a fact. So when you pull the racket, so I'm going to go A, B. See how my wrist is cocked? Yep. Now I'm going to drive my leg and hip and I pull. It's like pulling a rope. Okay, when I pull the rope, okay, the racket goes down, back. Now look where all this is unfolding. The elbow's on the hitting side. The arm straightens out, moment of truth, and then we'll get into the wiper or turning the doorknob and all this other stuff in a minute. But the ATP forehand, unit turn, left shoulder to ball, okay? And the only reason why I had Peter holding onto the racket, because he, he was excited and he didn't want to do it. When people don't like to do things, that's why I like to make them do things, all right? Now, sure, you might feel rushed, but it also might make you have more racket speed. So A, unit turn. B tap the dog. If I'm a righty, it'd be around 5 o'clock, 5.30. When the ball comes, you got to pull it. You pull. You pull. It's a very uncomfortable feeling because people aren't used to pulling. And one other thing before we get Peter back on track here, when you do the unit turn and then you go, see I like to do this in progressions, A, B, and then we go for the shot. I don't have someone say, uh, Keep it on this side of your body. Tap the dog at 5.30, good luck. You know, it, I've never done that. I have to do this in progressions. You gotta walk before you run and run before you sprint. So basically, you see someone like Fetter, he would be here, and then when he comes out of the backswing, he's shaping the racket. But if I stop the camera, bang! Rafa, stop the camera, bang! Djokovic, bang! Kyrgios, even though he's here, bang! Sock, he really inverts it because he has a severe western. Bang! Okay, 
they're all in the neighborhood and they hit the slot. That means they hit the moment of truth, boom, at the same time. There's different ways to get there. And that's the art of the deal with coaching, figuring out, okay, what works best for this player that day. You know, it's not one size fits all. This isn't cloning, but there are principles that have to be met. Besides all the relaxation stuff I did with Peter, one of the things he's gonna, I want him to do, I'm gonna do this in a progression, and I'm gonna get him to hit the ball twice as hard. Back to work. Okay, what I want you to do, Pete, I'm gonna start getting into how to correct your forehand. Go ahead and turn, shoulder, turn your shoulders. Okay, I want you to turn even more. Okay, now, I'm not saying it's wrong, but I want you to start for right now, like that. Okay. Just start right there. Yep. So, no, you can let go of the racket. Yeah, I didn't know what you meant. Okay, that's all good. Basically, what I have going on now, I already have his arm straight. Okay, I have the racket at seven o'clock. So, and the racket head is above the wrist. He's tapping the dog. You're gonna drive the legs and hips and turn it over. Okay, and you can, okay, don't take the racket back. It went back. See, that's what we call, ladies and gentlemen, pre-roll. He pre-rolled the racket. Right before he hit it, the racket went backwards and the racket should go forward. See, if the racket goes forward, it's all physics. If the racket goes forward and you pull on the butt cap, the other end goes down and back and that creates racket head speed. And so that is the ATP forehand. When you pull on the butt cap, the other end goes faster the other way. What you did, you had it in the position and then you went back. So you just kind of did a small little loop. Okay, set it back. You can go back a little bit more of the racket. Now, you're not allowed to take it back. You just gotta pull it forward. You're in the neighborhood, you're in the neighborhood. Turn a little bit more of the shoulder. Don't move the racket, pull. You went back first. Did I? Yep. I got video evidence. We got it on tape, bro. It's on tape. Did I? Turn a little bit more. Yeah, you got busted. Don't move it. Best one of your life. Best one ever. Let's go. Let's go. Feel different? No, I didn't ask that. That's all I asked, different. I'm not to turn that front shoulder. More, twist your, twist your body a little bit more, right there. Now your left, your right arm can go to the fence. Yeah. Got it, don't move the racket, you can't move it. But you gotta get more from the leg and hip. It's what we call a cause and an effect. Okay, if one thing is taken away, another thing has to be added. You gotta get more energy from the ground. Because right now, I've got you static and it feels a little awkward. Remember, this is a corrective technique, one phase of progression. In other words, you're on probation, maybe even double secret probation. You're start, this is the way I start everybody. Turn a little more, tap the dog at seven, you're done. If you notice where his racket is, it's probably about 7.30, you can go back a little bit more, right there. Don't move the racket and pull. Hello, the sound doesn't lie. I got his endorsement again, I like that. That's good, I like this endorsement. Hello, let's go! Woo. Hear the sound? And that ain't thunder, go, turn it. Okay, don't move the racket. You're on fire. By the way, there's a fire station right next to this court, so I can call 911. He's on fire, you're on fire! Don't move it. Pull. Conference. I don't need to ask the question. Trust me, he's already freaking out. I want you to talk. I've said enough already, okay? As you can tell, this is in my first rodeo. So I'm gonna let you talk what we just did there and what you felt. And you can say whatever you wanna say, yeah. your show. It, it, it felt different is the key word. Because it was different. It was different. It felt, I'm not sure if this is the way it's supposed to feel, but it felt more like, almost like a than like what I'm used to. I'm used to kind of like building up and snapping a lot. Well, you gotta remember, yeah. I, got, I got you in the closet. You're yeah. in probation, but keep yeah. going. Well, I mean, I felt, the, the interesting thing is I felt pop, even though it felt completely different, you know. I'm used to a lot more wind up, and, and I know you're, you got me in probation, but even, you know, what I did on the first one is probably what I would naturally want to do. You, you put me here, and then I wanted extra to get that thing. Correct. Instead of pulling forward, and that is a completely different feeling, and um, and it feels more like a, a almost like a push than than the snap uh, that I'm used to feeling. But I could I could see it stay lower and drive more. So it was a different result, even though I already had you locked in a position. When okay, when you hit the ball, did it sound different? It 
I felt it, I felt it stay low. I'm used to having my ball go higher and spinnier, so it stayed okay, lower. Okay, just so you know, that's because you bring your trunk up, you manufacture it, you're going, please God, get this over the net. I can see in your stroke. Yeah. Okay, so that's why with this one was a, a little bit different. You got that for free, because yeah. I, I didn't tell you to hit it lower. Yeah. It just, it went lower yeah. for whatever reason, because yeah. it kind of auto-corrected something else. But did you feel your racket was shorter? Definitely shorter. Definitely shorter, okay, that's a, a starting point. Did you feel the racket head, the head of the racket, go faster or slower? The head of the racket. The I, I Not the that, arm. I wasn't that in tune with it, to be honest. Back in probation. Go. We're rolling. <laughs> Turn the shoulder. Cut it right there. You don't have to move at all. Just pull. You went back first with the racket. You got to pull it. You can't, you can't move it. Good. But it'll be easier to pull it, Pete. It'll be easier to pull it if you have it at 6.30 or 7. You're about 7.30. There you go. See, as long as the racket, as long as it's off center, the racket's going to do what we call flip. It's going to go down and back. You see what I mean? Yeah. It's going to go down and back. So from right there, you don't move anything. Just drive your leg and hip. You pre-rolled. Don't move it. Get it back. Right there. Don't move it. Just pull forward. Awesome. Good. See, I said awesome, and it went in the net. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, it has nothing to do with going in, OK? People hit them in the field. We could be doing this in the parking lot. It's all about getting the stroke. Because a lot of times the net, the lines, and everything else make people worse, okay? Because they try to get it in. Turn, getting it in is a subconscious thing. Don't move the racket, pull. You're on fire. You're on fire! You're on fire! Go. Turn a little more. You're done. Don't move it. Again. Turn a little bit more. Good. Don't move it. Okay, come on back. Come on back. We're getting there. Listen, Rome one built in the day. Either was the ATP forehand. Your sheer show. I, I feel. I feel. I definitely feel the racket at speed now because I was paying attention to well, it. Well, let's just let me let me just jump in there and have intervention. Okay, you're saying you feel the racket head speed more, yeah. or you feel the racket head faster. And think about it. At this stage of the game, you play tennis your whole life. You come here. Okay, I'm feeding the ball. You're turned sideways more than ever. I got your arm almost straight, okay? You can have it straight, a little bent. Your racket is static, or what we call stationary. Mm -hmm. At 6.30, I'm feeding the ball, and I'm telling you to pull it. So without any practice, and you're like an accomplished player, you've played. It's not like a beginner or, or an adult player or whatever. And already, you're saying you can feel things that you've never felt, never felt. in 28 years. Say so you're 28, right? Okay, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like that. Okay, I like okay. That. <laughs> as long you never, you never felt it. Yeah. See, and so when you feel something as a competitive athlete or someone who wants to learn, you know, because we're all day to day, you never know what's going to happen. You want to be the best you can be. So uh, you, you're feeling something different, but yeah. you just don't, and it's a good feeling. Yeah, I like it. And there's something to, to build upon here. Mm -hmm. Anything else you want to add with that before I keep rolling? It feels. It feels uh, effortless. It, feel, it feels like a lot okay, less work. Another intervention. What's the work. first thing? What's the first thing you say, or maybe the club players, or people say when they see someone really, really good do something? They say they make it look easy. Easy. And yeah. so that's what you just said. Yeah. You know, it's what we call efficiency of motion, and that's a big thing with biomechanics: how to optimize certain things. But listen, if you do a billion of anything or a million of anything. You, you can master crap. You can get good at, you know, of something bad. You can yeah. master a bad habit, yeah. you know, and I'm not saying that's wrong. And there's just a lot of bad habits, junior, college, and pro. But if you do a billion of anything and you're athletic and can run, it's going to work. But people need to understand, that's not the staple that you should look at. That's not the video. That's not the article you should read. I mean, if you want to know the big ticket items that people are really hitting on all those bases, you know, I could lay those out for you because you got to be careful what you're looking at. Even if they win a Grand Slam, mm -hmm. even if they're a world-class player, they might not be doing it because of that technical component. Yeah. Go, oh, look at that forehand, yeah. look at that backhand, look at that serve. And there is something getting it in. I get all that stuff. But this is all biomechanics, how to learn the ATP, for, ATP forehand step by step. Now what I want you to do, go back there. I'm going to show you something else to make the racket go faster and get more spin. Faster? Still? Faster. No, no. 
We're just getting warmed up. I'm in the third quarter. Let's go. We're... So here's what I want you to do. Turn the front shoulder, tap the dog at 6.30, right there, you go back a little bit more. Now, I'm not saying it's wrong. I need to explain about the follow through. The follow through is a corrective technique. Don't let anybody use it for anything else. It might help you get your arm away. It might make your stroke look prettier. I get all that stuff. I get that stuff. But I use it as a corrective technique. There's not a wrong way or right way. There's a better way. If you look at Fetter and these guys, some guys are over the shoulder, some are below the shoulder, some are around the ribs, some are in the pocket. OK, what I want you to do, this is a corrective technique. Tap the dog at 630. Every follow through, Peter, I want you to put in your right pocket. OK? Don't move that racket. OK, almost. That was around your hip. I mean, that was around your ribs. OK, time out. You got to get it back a little further. Go back to 630, the racket, and go into the pocket. Don't move it. OK? A little bit. Now what I want you to do, go ahead, set it. I know this is going to freak you out even when I say it. You're going to finish below your right knee. Only three people I've done this with had reconstructive ACL surgery, so don't worry. Okay, don't move the racket. Blow the knee. Again, notice how I kind of dodged that. I, I don't know you that well yet, so I don't trust you. Don't move the racket. Don't move the racket. Set it. Don't move it. Arm is straight, okay? He's at 630, okay? Awesome, racket heads above the wrist. He's tapping the dog. Pull it, roll it. Go below the knee. Go, go below the knee. Go back a little bit of the racket. There you go. Pull. Hello! I like that. Come on over here. The sound, it's not the 4th of July yet. It's only May 2nd. Okay, that was good. That was good. I like it. Now, when I first said go below your knee, did you think I was crazy? What do you I, think? I already know you're crazy, so I love it. <laughs> crazy I, in a good way. But yeah, I mean, I, I know that you're going to do a lot of experimental yeah. stuff, so I'm just like here to soak up everything. And, okay. And, and so what did it feel like? Uh, even though you did okay going into the pocket, what did that last one feel like? Because when the minute I say that, especially to an adult, they think it's going to go into the bottom of the net. Yeah. And if they're tight, it might. Yeah. But remember, from a science point of view, whether you hit the baseball, the golf ball, or the tennis, once you hit the ball, the ball's gone. Yeah. So the follow through has nothing to do with anything. Yeah. It just deaccelerates the racket into a certain area. Yeah. It might help you think, well, it's going to make it go there. The follow through doesn't make a ball go there. Mm -hmm. There's other principles. Yeah. But what did that feel like with your racket? I'm going to see if you can get the right answers here. When you went below your knee. Well, I just feel like. Did you feel the I, racket went faster or slower? The, the, the racket's definitely going faster. Hello. <laughs> and I feel like I'm getting more explosiveness. I feel like I'm using my, I'm starting to use my body more. I think. Well, because I'm getting and you to pull the racket. Did you feel more spin on the last I, one? I was gonna say that was the last thing I was gonna say. I'm starting to feel more spin. So okay. I'm, I'm starting to feel the power in the spin, which is how these pros are keeping these missiles in. Right, and that's what the art of the deal is. So, you know, this is kind of the ATP forehand, how I would teach it and how I'd react according, accordingly to correct it. It's not just like, okay, Rick Macy says, turn your shoulders, you know, get this at 90 degrees, tap the dog, pull and roll. You can see there's more to it. What I did here was some corrective techniques and I use this below the knee thing. From a science point of view, what happens is it makes the racket go faster because it makes the rack go faster because you're gonna come across quicker, okay? What people call wiper or windshield wiper, or like you've heard me coin this phrase, uh, turn the doorknob, which is exactly what happens because the forearm and the shoulder go like that. It's not a wrist movement. A lot of people see these pros do certain things. A lot of this occurs even with the great Rafa. I mean, he's all the way here before he wipers the racket, yep. okay? He's all fully extended, okay? And feds here before anything turns, it's not this. So people, it's, they don't understand because it happens so quickly. And I've been fortunate to see this at 400 frames a second, millions and millions of times. So besides being on the court, but what I did with Peter is I wanted him to go below the knee. And right off the bat, after he connected on the last one, he said, my racket's going faster and I get more spin. Now. You're probably saying, why don't more people do that? Well, most of people go here, okay? It's a cause and an effect. No one tells them to do that. The great Andre Agassi, who hit a little cleaner, a little flatter, okay? Came out of the backswing, okay? And his follow through was above the shoulder. And when you go above the shoulder, you're naturally gonna get more of a cleaner stroke. 
Okay, so the follow through, even the great Roger Federer, he might have 13 different follow throughs in a match. Over the shoulder, under the shoulder, below the armpit, around the rib cage, in the pocket, here, there, you know, it's all situational. So the follow through is a corrective technique. But what I've tried to do with Peter is tell him the ATP forehand, exactly how it should be done, try to embark on what I call the big ticket items. Then I kind of got under the hood to say, here's what you got to do as a player, as an athlete. I showed him about the relaxation phase, the preparation phase on how he really should be turning. And most of all, this should be done for anybody you get on a ball machine in progressions. Don't do it from the ready position because your brain, if you go from here, it ain't going to do it. I've never had anybody. You got to do it in progressions. It's like eating dinner a little bit at a time. Eat the whole thing, indigestion. That's what's going to happen on, with your stroke. I would turn the shoulders, tap the dog. I'd get on the machine or have a coach feed you, pull and roll. But you got to be careful. Even though here you think it's going on, even Peter, the first couple or a handful, he would go like that. So he would pre-roll the racket. When you pull the racket, when the leg and the hip goes like this first, the racket flips down and back. What that does, it causes the racket head to go down and back and you transfer energy into the head of the racket. That's why you see these guys on the tour, it looks like this. Okay, you see it, they pull and it goes down and back, but this whole chain of event occurs on the hitting side of the body. They're not doing this, doing the arc, rainbow, banana, candy cane, ferris wheel, letter C, coming around the body, okay, which you could do if the ball's slow enough, you just don't see that. They've figured this out on their own because when you're in competition and you're a high level athlete, even if you've been in the neighborhood in a junior, your ground stroke will morph and you'll kind of pick this stuff up. But you see different variations, like I said, curios, sock, there's all kinds of, adaptation but I'm gonna tell you all these guys that hit the hit the now Murray doesn't Andy Murray would be like that but he had foot speed mental toughness backhand was money all these other attributes but he didn't do this but his forehand was okay but it wasn't one of the top hundred but because of those other attributes he could use it so his forehand was okay but it wasn't like better and some of these other guys who check all the boxes okay and they make the racket head go very very fast with a very short stroke and that is the ATP forehand, and I guarantee you, Peter's forehand just got a lot better. Thank you, Rick. You awesome. got it. Thank you so much. You got the full enchilada. <laughs> okay, Rick, so, so that was awesome. So my, my plan in this is to go home and really go to work. So do you have like, I don't know, three, three drills that I should be doing to start to make this feel natural? Because I'm really having to focus on, like you're saying, pull, in my mind, and I know it's probably not the right thing to think, but I'm thinking still, because I'm so used to doing the extra stuff that I'm going, just say still and go forward. So how do I, what are some drills I can do to start to make this feel natural okay. to where now, the start great, flow? Great, great question. You know, what I would recommend is without the ball, see, in any sport where it's, there's a lot of repetition, you have to what we call reprogram the reflex, or you have to uh, train the muscle memory totally different. And whenever you're on the court with a ball and there's pressure, you gotta change the environment. So what I'd recommend is I would set the racket, since you're lefty, I'll do it lefty, okay? Set the racket at 6.30 or seven, arm straight, shoulder turn, and I would practice firing the hips and pulling, and I would do that exercise at least 200 times a day, and the reason why, your brain's gonna go, this is interesting, I've never done this, this is a whole new thing. I've never done this at this age. Now the key is, and I have all the little kids do this at home. The key is you gotta make sure, so I gotta train the parents, okay? Believe me, I've trained a lot of those, okay? That's a whole nother story, okay? Other yeah, I don't wanna go there. Okay, so, so, but you gotta make sure you're doing it right. I'd hate for you to do stationary stuff and then pre-roll. Yeah. Or, you know, you wanna make sure you're doing this right. Yeah. I mean, that's the key. So when you do it in an isolated, relaxed environment where there's no pressure, you're reprogramming the reflex. It's almost like shadow swings or, or imaginary or visualization. People, because they're not hitting a ball, it's not fun, they're not sweating, people don't want to put in the dirty work. They just want to play and all that good stuff, but that's something different. If you really want to learn it, 
You're gonna learn it without the ball. You're not gonna learn it with the ball. Because the minute the ball comes, you got 25 years of competitiveness and bad habits and all this other stuff. So the first thing I would do is I would do the unit turn, set the racket at 630, check all the boxes, do the pull, the roll, finish into the pocket. And I would do it with a lot of intensity. I would even turn my head and look at it. So the first thing that I would focus on is doing 200 a day without the ball. 200 a day without the ball. Got it. Thank you so much. I'm going to go to work. Rick, this was amazing. Well, wait, you want, I, yeah. I got a, 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 got more. Yeah, I got more. Oh, yeah, I got more. Thank and you. I, well, yeah, no, I, because oh. you, you wanted three. I want them all. Yeah, that was opening ceremonies. Okay. So what I would do, number two, yeah. is I would put my arm straight, mm -hmm. okay, and do this exercise, okay, 100 times a day. See how it's coming across? Yep. But I'm doing it with after the arm. Extension. After your extension. See, a lot of people that hit the ball, you know, because people are seeing stuff in a magazine or they see stuff on video or they see stuff on TV, which you can't see any of this. Yeah. If Agassi you, would say six inches before, six inches after. Is that still a good tip or is that tip outdated? No, that, that's good. But I'm just saying the human eye can't see it. They can't see this stuff. See, and a lot of people think this is right. Yeah. Okay, and you might see someone do that. That's not what we want. So I want you to muscle memory again, okay. arm, arm straight, and then wiper. Okay. So you want to, what we call, bake it in. And I do this for a lot of people where I actually start them here. Uh -huh. I reverse engineer start teaching. I, I start this way, because when they do this, okay, if I let them do their backswing, I'm already telling you what's going to happen. Banana, candy cane, Ferris wheel, letter C, oval, rainbow, arc. They're not going to do it. The minute, the, the minute they leave the station, the brain's going, been there, done that. I'm going to crack this one, and they're not going to do it. Nobody ever has. And some of the people I'm talking about are household names who have won grand slams. And even some of these kids that go to college, I got so many kids have amazing forehand technically, okay? And hopefully I put that on. If they're a good athlete, they have a good attitude, they work, all this stuff's gonna happen. So two things I would do, I would do the imaginary here, and then I would do, once you have contact, I would do this, yeah. okay? Now, the next thing, I would do the stroke. If you wanna do it from the ready position and someone feeds you the ball, I would do it like you're at karate class or Taekwondo. I would do this. A, B, C. I wouldn't do a, 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 a shape or a little arc, which you see everybody, they shape the racket. You know, we're all taught to have a rhythm. Plus, this looks better than ha, ha, ha. But I'm gonna tell you, if you do this, up, down, pull, you'll learn the stroke even quicker. Okay. It's crazy, because see, your brain wants to go flow. Mm -hmm. Flowing is good, rhythm is good, shape is good, but this is a corrective technique. When I tell people, up, down, pull. Up, plant the tree. Yeah. Put the butt cap on the dog's head. I actually have it more up, okay? So a square is different than an arc. Yep. See, an arc, you're gonna go this way. Now eventually, you wanna shape it to the outside and pull. Now the key is to pull it now. Yep. See, I'm, I'm pulling it now. So what I'm doing with you is starting there. So the three things would be, already set the racket, do it without the ball, do it with the arm extended on contact and wiper, and then have someone feed the ball if they can, and you just go up, down, pull. And see, when your racket's up and you pull it, it will flip like no tomorrow. Awesome. Good luck, bro. Thank you so much. To, to be great. continued at a theater near you. <laughs> Is that not a great lesson? Now, I have 40 more amazing lessons like that with the best coaches on the planet. These are master classes you're not going to find anywhere else on the internet. The event is called Tennis Con 7. You can get free 48-hour access to the event right now. I usually only open this up once a year in October, but since you're watching this video, you can get your hands on it right now by clicking in the card section or the description box below. So I've got a preview for you actually. If you don't know what TennisCon is, it'll give you a better idea and it all looks awesome to you. Make sure you sign up for free.